Welcome to Scott Allen Miller's Camera Cafe. I've been wanting to, for some time, come up with a show that lets me talk about cameras and photography, filming and Final Cut Pro and other editing software and things that I like to do as my hobby. And I have not had an opportunity to do that. I have a lot of YouTube channels where I vlog, where I talk about travel, life in Central America, or even technology and business. So I do a lot online, but my hobby when I get fun time to do things on my own or hang out with my daughters is either video gaming, and I have a video gaming channel with my daughters, or cameras and photography. And that I've really not had an outlet to talk about. And so I've created the Camera Cafe, a place where you can pull up a cup of coffee and we can pull out our camera gear or our software and talk about photography and camera gear and all those fun things that camera people like to talk about. So this is my take on a camera show. And today, on this very first episode, I'm going to talk about something nostalgic for me and something that, if you're new to photography or simply just really interested in it, may not be all that familiar with. You probably have heard the words, but uh, if you've been around, you're going to be like, this is old hat, you don't need to talk about this. But if you're if you're new or it's, it's something you've never really looked into or you've never moved past uh, the, the gear of a camera phone or whatever, I'm going to talk about the SLR, the single lens reflex. And this is an interesting time to talk about it because for the last almost 100 years, probably more like 70 years, the single lens reflex has been considered the pinnacle of photographic equipment. This is what professionals would turn to for almost all needs, adventure, photojournalism, landscape, portraiture, weddings, you name it, we generally are going to use a single lens reflex. But the single lens reflex has essentially gone off the market in the last few months. For decades, we have had this equipment. The very first ones were available in the 1800s. The first descriptions of reflex cameras go back to the 1600s, and they've been the dominant professional format since the 1960s and were pretty available before then. But in the last couple years, they've fallen by the wayside, and the last makers, the Nikons and Canons of the world who held on to the single lens reflex because it was what defined them as companies for so long, are now done. So the single lens reflex has moved from being a part of a standard photographer's toolkit into being a bit of nostalgia, into being a legacy device, a piece of photographic history. A few makers are still out there making them, but they're not the mainstream manufacturers. Most notably, Pentax is still out there, and Pentax is probably the oldest current maker of the single lens reflex, someone who's been making it continuously since, I'm guessing, the 1930s. You can still buy theirs today, but Pentax is a niche camera. You're not gonna go into a normal camera store, certainly not a normal electronic store, and pick up a Pentax. They are available. They're good cameras, and if you're really interested in a brand new single lens reflex that's still being developed, then certainly take a look at their lineup. But for me, I like to maintain a single lens reflex. I wanna talk about why. So first, what is a single lens reflex? If you're not familiar with it, what sets this apart from other types of cameras is that when you're focusing, when you're composing, and only then, the light coming into the camera, we don't need a lens cap on here, we're gonna take that off. When the light enters, the lens, it goes in and it hits a mirror right about here, obviously not on the side, in the middle, right about here in front of the sensor. And that light bounces up and there's a prism up here and that prism sends the light out through the viewfinder. When I'm using this camera, and I'll turn it on here for you if I can find the power button, I get information on the screen back here, but I don't see the image. If I wanna see what I'm looking at, if I wanna see a picture of you, I have to look through right here in order to take that. This is an optical system. And one of the things that's really nice about this, much like how vinyl records give you a visceral physical connection to the original music, an optical viewfinder gives you a very personal connection to the image, to the subject, 
that you're gonna take a picture of. And a lot of photographers really enjoy that. If you're doing photojournalism or sports, there's a certain advantage to being able to physically see the world in real time. There's absolutely no delay. As fast as the photons can enter and move through the camera, they're in your eye. Of course, the human eye has its own delays, photons have their own delays, but those is the absolute minimum possible latency. And so that has its advantages, and there's reasons why certain professionals still wish they had that or continue to use single lens reflexes for that reason. But for me, it's the visceral experience. It's an emotional connection when I use the camera. It makes me feel a certain way, and it's important when you're using a camera, any camera, to think of it as an expressive device. It is part of your creative toolkit. And if that experience of looking through the viewfinder and having no screen inside of it, but actually looking through glass straight out to your subject makes you happy, inspires you to be creative, then it's an important tool for you. Now, this is different than if we were dealing with an analog camera. This is still a digital device. This one is anyway. Most single lens reflex made over the decades had actual film inside of them. So these grew up as a film device and then were adapted. So we refer to the adapted ones as a digital single lens reflex or a DSLR, but they're all SLRs equally. Today, it is only the DSLRs that are still being made and those are the ones that were just recently discontinued. Um, so we have two different types of things you may want to consider when you're looking at a camera like this. Is it something that you wanna have that film experience, that antique experience, or are you simply looking for that physical connection to your subject? So a digital SLR, a DSLR, may be something you're interested in. As a creative tool, I find it important. Now for me, the SLR is how I grew up in photography. When I first got started taking pictures seriously as a child, and I use the term seriously a little bit loosely there, but when I started taking pictures as a child, it was using my father's Canon SLR. Of course, 35 millimeter film at the time. That camera is what taught me manual focus. It's what taught me exposure. It's what taught me how to choose my film, print, black and white, uh, uh, slide film, all of those things I learned on an SLR. An SLR taught me all the tools of the trade and I did all of my early work on there and I still have published on my Flickr feed all of those pictures that I took using that early SLR. And so for me, there's a piece of my past that I only get that feeling of when I'm using an SLR. SLR connects me to my own history. Now, if you're new to photography or if you've never used an SLR before, you may not have that, but you have a different experience. You have an opportunity to pick it up and hold in your hands a piece of history and look at photography the way that we did in the past. And that may be exciting for you uh, or creatively inspiring for you. For me, it's nostalgic. Just like using an old black and white computer, black and white with a green screen and a big clicky mechanical t keyboard, instantly transports me to the early 1980s when I was learning to program, when I was first learning how computers worked. And it inspires me, it makes me excited, even though it's completely impractical. SLRs are generally impractical. As much as SLR uh, fans are gonna tell you that they have huge advantages over other types of cameras, the reality is that on a technical level, they do not. Similarly, vinyl does not have a big advantage over digital recordings today. Of course, it does over a CD, but CDs are from the early 1980s. They're a very, very old technology. If you're comparing to un, um, um, lossless, compressed, extremely high dynamic range digital audio today, the vinyl does not hold a candle to it, not in reality. Plus, it wears out, it is not repeatable. Now. With an SLR, because there's a mirror in there, when we go to take a picture, that mirror's in the way of the sensor. That means when we press the shutter button, we have to move that mirror out of the way in order to take the picture. That means a couple things. One, when looking through here, we're gonna have a disruption during the time we take a picture. Of course, it's very fast. But for a moment, we're gonna lose our connection to the subject. And if you have a fast moving subject, you may lose them because in that split second, they may move out of your frame and you don't know if you got the picture and you don't know where they are. You have to find them again and recompose. That can pose a problem. There's also vibration caused by that. There's also a lot of mechanical pieces that are expensive to make, expensive to maintain, and are going to wear out. So SLRs wear out more quickly. They're more expensive to manufacture and they're more complex to maintain. So you have to be more careful with them. There's more things you have to keep clean. You have to keep the mirror clean and the sensor clean, not just the sensor. 
Of course, sometimes the mirror protects the sensor, and if the mirror is not completely clean, it's not the end of the world, it's not part of your picture path. But all those things make an SLR less practical, and that's why they've really phased out. There's more profit, more functionality, in replacement style cameras. And those replacements have been around for a long time and they have been gaining traction over the decades. For the most part, SLRs never had a real purpose in the digital world other than to keep people who were used to this form factor happy. People like me who have this connection to it and don't wanna change how we look at cameras, how we think about cameras, how we use cameras. And so keeping the SLR for a lot of reasons has kept us connected to our past. If you move to a, a new modern mirrorless camera, the standard terminology for a replacement for the SLR, you'll often find that they look and feel almost identical, but instead of an optical viewfinder, they'll have an electronic viewfinder or an EVF. And what that means is they have a tiny screen in there and it's probably the same as what's on the back. There may only be one or the other, but generally there's both. And you have options. You can use the screen. You can have a tilt out screen or flip out screen. You can see different things through the viewfinder. More information can be presented on it. There's simply more functionality, more possibilities by doing that, but there are negatives. SLRs do have one major advantage in many cases is that when you're not actively taking pictures, but you do have the lens cap off, you do have the camera turned on, you are composing, you can do all of those things without actively using the battery in any significant way, even if you're getting exposure. Of course, you're using a little bit of battery at that point, but extremely little. So you can, under certain types of photography, get extremely long battery life out of an SLR that you may not be able to get out of other kinds of cameras because they have to show something in the viewfinder that uses a lot more battery, a lot more battery is the sensor has to be active. But with one of these, the sensor doesn't have to be active and in fact has no reason to be active until you're ready to take a picture and they're able to conserve that battery quite significantly. Of course, SLRs have a lot of history and so there's a lot of them used or still new, but, but in warehouses available on the market, a lot of lenses and other accoutrements for these cameras are on the market. So if this is something you find interesting, going out and looking at a used camera store, whether online or your local camera store, may present a lot of opportunity to get into the DSLR world or the traditional analog SLR world and explore photography in a new way for you, that may be something that's very valuable. For me, I'm gonna keep my SLRs. This one is relatively new to me and I plan on doing, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this talk. I'm gonna talk about this specific DSLR for me, why this one's important and why I'm so excited to have this. I'm gonna talk about its lenses and a few different things in an upcoming episode, but I wanted to give kind of this background a little bit to me and a little bit to DSLRs, why I love them so much and why you probably are not going to want one, but why you might. Thank you for joining me. I hope that this is a fun new channel for everybody. Please remember to like and subscribe, share this with your friends, let them know if they're into photography or video making, uh, whatever, that this is a new channel where we're gonna talk about uh, cameras. And I also have, I do a lot of work with Final Cut Pro. Um, I have a lot of different types of cameras, so we're gonna talk about those. And I am based in Central America, so I am going to be talking about cameras through the specific challenges of living and working in an environment where I can't run to the store and buy parts. I can't run to the store and buy a new camera or a new tripod or anything. I am very limited on what I can get. I generally have to bring it in by backpack on a flight. So I have to have, I have a completely different logistical workflow in getting camera equipment. Uh, and I hope that that is interesting too. If you are someone who is very interested in used camera gear, um, that applies a lot to me. I, it's very unlikely that I will buy new equipment when I'm bringing it into Central America. It's simply too expensive and too much work to make that make sense. And it takes too long. By the time I can get equipment, I might as well get used. Uh, and it lets me get a lot more stuff. So all those are gonna be things that we're gonna cover here on the channel. I will see you all next time. Thanks for joining me.